This is the brand new 2024 Lenovo Yoga 9i. Last year I reviewed this laptop. It wasn't Yoga, I think it was just called the Lenovo 9i Pro. Now it's called Lenovo Yoga 9i Pro. Lenovo had sent that one last year for me to review and I absolutely adored that laptop. I was kind of sad to send it back. And so the moment that this laptop hit the Lenovo website, I decided to buy it. Uh, there was a fair bit of change this year. If you come down here, I mean, the, the actual form factor of the laptop has not changed, but there is a considerable difference here in the CPU offering. You can see here, they've went with the new Core Ultra lineup from Intel. So there's two different options here. There's a 155H and a 185H. They're very, very similar CPUs. You can see the same number of cores in that and threads. It's basically just clock speeds. Uh, I picked up the 185H primarily because it was paired with the 32 gigabytes of RAM. So I picked up the 185H. I have tested the 155H on an Alienware laptop. It's fantastic. So both very good options there. That's a big change from last year because there are some other advantages that come with those CPU. One of those being that it comes with Intel Arc iGPU graphics. And I'm gonna have a follow-up video where I test the Intel Arc uh, graphics on this laptop 185H. I've already recorded it and the results are actually very impressive. So that's one really cool thing. Uh, you do then also get dedicated GPUs here. So there's a 4050 available in Canada, at least there was. There's also a 4060 available in Canada. Apparently there's a 4070. We don't have it here, but I've already had some of my viewers say that it is available actually. So all fantastic GPUs. You can see here that they all come at 100 watts, not the 150 you'd get in a gaming laptop. Uh, it's not going to make any difference though. 100 watts is more than enough on these GPUs here. They don't really scale beyond that anyways. So 100 watts is going to be actually fantastic for all three of these. And you'll see in my gaming test that it does quite well. I will also have a gaming test on that 4060. So I'm going to have at least three videos on this laptop. Three different options on RAM here. I picked up 32. There wasn't a 64 at least in Canada. 16 is, don't buy it. Do not buy 16 gigabytes of soldered memory on a Halo laptop like this. This is a pricey laptop, very, very premium laptop. There's no upgradability to that RAM once you buy the device. 16 gigabytes is already rapidly ups becoming obsolete. We've been using that for like more than a decade. Uh, 32 gigabytes is where you want to buy in on a laptop that is not upgradable. Nice, fast memory too. So, uh, you know, pick it up with 32 or 64 or uh, don't even buy it. As we scroll down here, there is more customizability. There's basically two primary screen options here. You can get IPS, you can get an IPS screen, which is a nice IPS, but it's nothing special. And then you can get mini LED. Mini LED is really the draw on this laptop. I'd highly recommend people move towards that mini LED because I mean, if you're going with IPS, there are cheaper options, even from Lenovo. Then there's, you know, non-touch here, these two here, and then there's a touch option for both. These are fantastic mini LED screens. So whether you go with touch or not, it's really up to you. I mean, I don't actually need touch. So I wouldn't have really cared if it was, but I picked up, this is what they had. So they had these two options. So I picked up the mini LED touchscreen variant, very high resolution, 3200 by 2000. That's going to put it just shy of like a 4K screen, if you know what 4K resolution is. So higher than 1600p, lower than 4K, kind of right in the middle. Uh, 600 nits brightness, fantastic screen, 1200 nits with HDR, and you can notice it. It's quite a beautiful screen. To create your laptops, so you're going to get really good colors. You can see there, 100% P3, 100% Adobe RGB, uh, sRGB as well. So you're going to get really, really good colors. It's also 165 hertz refresh rate. So overall, it's just a gorgeous screen if you're going to be using it for creation. And of course, gaming, it's going to look quite nice. And here we go. The excitement begins. Unbox this here. It's the uh, kind of the Lenovo proprietary style charger. So let's bring that out there. Very, very beautiful. This was an exceptionally nice laptop last year. I was a huge fan of it in terms of the aesthetics, of the design, and really everything. Um, the only thing, like I said, was just the battery life. It was not fantastic. Let's check out the weight here. It's not like a little USB-C charger, but it should be fine overall. Let's see. It'd be nice if they went with uh, the high power USB-C. That's about a pound actually, so that's that. But again, it takes USB-C charging. This should be around four and a half. So I think we're gonna be looking at a little over five pounds for the whole package. Let's see here. 2,100 grams. What would an equivalently sized, approximately equivalently sized gaming laptop weigh? So this is a Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. Uh, some of them can be heavier, some of them can be lighter. This is the 2023 model. Basically, 2022 is the same size. Let's see that. So 2,473 grams. So this is much heavier, about 400 grams heavier. So this is like basically the same weight as this with the charger on its own. And you include the charger, it becomes much heavier. So, you know, this may look like a thick laptop, but it's really not when you put it beside, you know, a gaming laptop, you lose quite a bit of size. 
So on the left side there, we get the two chargers. One of them is Thunderbolt, that one right there. That's gonna be a USB-C 3.2, I think Gen 2, so HDMI, headphone, power in. And of course you can power over USB if need be. It also has power delivery out. Camera kill switch there. Uh, SD card, full size SD card. Again, this is not just like a, this is not like a gaming laptop. You can game on it, obviously. Uh, but this is more of a hybrid style laptop. And two more USB-A's, nothing on the back there. Bottom, nice and sleek. Basically feet to raise it up and a big full intake there, all metal chassis, right? So you're gonna get a nice metal design all the way around. So overall, these laptops are quite nice actually. Yeah. That's the glossy screen there, mini LED model. It does come with an IPS model. I believe the IPS is also glossy. So it's a glossy IPS or a glossy mini LED. Uh, obviously went for the mini LED. Nice interior there. You can see, you know, gigantic trackpad, metal kind of industrial kind of design, right? Like kind of like the Legions and that. And a lot of Lenovo stuff just goes for like functional designs rather than, you know, looking all uh, like super, super gamery or, you know, over the top in some way. So that's nice there. Uh, keyboard has a slightly different texture actually than last year. Last year they had um, what I would call like a glossy style key, but this year they're actually not. Other than that, and then you get your uh, speakers up there. So let's turn it on, let's open it up and see what's inside. Yeah, so to get in here, you're going to need this kind of star. It's a six pointed star. I don't know if you can see that on camera. You're going to go in there, and this is, looks like it's size four, whatever that means. Okay, so I took the screws out. No big deal there, just pretty straightforward. Uh, it's kind of a um, narrow gap there. You can probably go in the back here would be easiest. Still have some clips in there. Okay, and there we go. First thermal pad is going to go on the primary SSD. There's actually no thermal pad on the second one there. Okay, so here's a look inside the laptop. So we can see there, I mean, it's no gaming laptop. You don't have a vapor chamber with 17 heat pipes. Uh, but you do get a dual heat pipe set up here. So two thick heat pipes on the left, two on the right. One of them is going to the RTX 4060, which is probably that one. Big one here going to the 185H. Obviously, if you have a 4050 or something like that, it's going to probably run a little bit cooler. Dense fins there. They actually look really interesting. They're like thinner in the middle. And then you can see they actually have like a thicker design there. See so when I pull that down. And then we can see here, we do get one NVMe here on the right side there. So that's, you know, the first NVMe that comes with it. And then you are going to get a second NVMe here on the left side. Battery in this laptop here is 84 watts. So, you know, you could technically get it up to 99 watts or whatever. Uh, but, you know, there is actually really big speakers in here. You can see that there. They have huge speakers. So, you know, this type of speaker here is going to be rivaling something like uh, MacBook Pro, I would guess, based on just last year's results. Personally, I'm fine with it because I love to have really nice large speakers on that. So that's going to be one thing. Not a lot for upgradability here. You can actually see that the Wi-Fi is soldered, uh, but overall it looks pretty tight. Okay, and for the science here, I've taken off the cooling solution. So that's off now. Uh, I'm very nervous about it because this is an expensive laptop and I'm taking my time. So that's off there and that's what it looks like underneath. So good enough fans. We have some thermal putty, not thermal paste. Uh, not thermal pads. In the Nova Legions, they use um, PTM7950, PTM7950. Very good that they're using a PTM type material. You know, that's good to see, and it will really help this machine stay cooler than it would if it was just using a basic uh, paste, so that's really good. But because I've messed it up, I'm gonna put more stuff on, so I'm gonna replace it with PTM7950 because I took off whatever that was that came with it. Uh, but you can see here they use a thermal uh, putty basically is what it is. So I'll clean that off there. Like you can see here how this is dry and that suggests that it's PTM. Okay, so that's what basically it looks like. I just added the PTM back. You can see there it kind of looks like a pad type material or PTM is much more effective than thermal paste. Uh, not as effective as liquid metal, but it's kind of in between the two and it does reduce the risk of like, liquid metal leaking out and frying your system. Okay, so first things first, now that the laptop is on, I think we can all agree this is a gorgeous screen. Last year it had a gorgeous screen, this year it has a gorgeous screen, that mini LED, incredibly vibrant colors, very, very bright screen as well, just absolutely gorgeous, it wasn't even turned up, just searing my eyes because it's actually a little darker outside because I went and had some food. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful screen here. So let's start with a little uh, typing test here, we'll get into that here. So the keyboard last year was Marvelous. They did change the texture of the keys the last year. 
the keys themselves had a smoother kind of metallic texture to them. This year it's a little bit rubberized. I've noticed that for like pretty much every Lenovo laptop this year. The Legions are going that route, the Idea Pads are apparently going that route too, where it's kind of like a, almost like a rubberized texture. If you've ever used a Microsoft Surface uh, laptop, like the actual laptop, they have something, they're a little bit more rubberized. This is something in between, kind of that rubberized texture of the Microsoft Surface keyboard. Uh, it's not the exact same style, but that texture of that feels like that. A uh, huge trackpad, you can see that there. And it is a glass trackpad, covered trackpad. Very, very nice, gigantic. Let's do a quick typing test here. Yep, yeah, so it's really, really nice. Um, slightly smaller keycaps, like the actual physical keycaps are slightly smaller than a Lenovo Legion keyboard. So we'll bring one of those in. So this is the Lenovo Legion. You can see that the actual physical keycaps are slightly taller, right? The actual travel is about the same. Right? Maybe it's slightly higher on the Legion, but similar. But the actual physical keycaps are slightly larger on Legion. They're truly fantastic typing experience, same as last year. Not really any difference. I actually don't mind that texture on here. Um, I didn't think I would like it because I typically lean towards liking kind of the uh, smooth style texture, uh, but it's not like sticky or grimy or anything like that. And because it's grayer color, I don't think it's going to pick up fingerprints like that. I guess that's min, bright, off, one. I, I don't know what that is. I've never seen that button before. What is that? It doesn't do anything. Okay, well, if I figure out what that is, I'll flash it on the screen. That's a cool little symbol. I have no idea what that does. Look at that screen. So let's look at the screen. This thing, it comes with beautiful backgrounds that really emphasize the colors and the, uh, like it's, the it's a gorgeous screen. Look at that. It's not going to show up on camera, but that looks fantastic. I guess if you have like maybe an iPhone or something or like an OLED phone or an OLED screen, it'll look good from what I'm showing you, but it looks really, really nice. So truly the screen was so nice last year that I decided to pick this up. Like I was in love with it. If you watch my thumbnail, I think it's a picture of me being in love with the screen. And that carries over this year. It's just such a nice screen. My phone is freaking out because it's such a nice screen. Obviously, you get absolute blacks here. It may not show up on camera, but uh, you know, mini LEDs like an OLED where you get absolute blacks there. You know, extremely high contrast ratio on mini LEDs like you get on an OLED screen. So it looks beautiful. Colors pop quite a bit. It is a reflective screen, glossy. You can see that there. It's actually not. I've seen glossier screens, but it is definitely glossy, which allows the colors to pop more. I actually prefer glossy screens, even if they're IPS. I prefer a glossy screen. Yeah, just a gorgeous screen. Yeah, I mean, the screen is really like, it's just a 10 out of 10. It's just absolutely gorgeous. This thing will be a joy to use when it comes for me doing like cartography work, video editing, you know, thumbnail creation, just just using it content consumption. Uh, this is the touch screen option. Uh, I'm not really huge on touch screens. It's fine. It's not really my thing because uh, I don't like to have fingerprints on my screen. Uh, some people may love it though. It is you know nice to kind of navigate when you're you know coming through just quickly. If you're just navigating through you know an operating system, you can be like really fast if you're doing uh, this type of thing. And if the screen is large, it is actually easy to navigate because it's a big screen. If it's a tiny little thing, you know, you're trying to get your fingers in the little corners and stuff, but here it's relatively easy to navigate, so. Okay, and now we're gonna do the audio test. If this laptop is anything like last year, this is gonna blow my socks off. Uh, the audio on this laptop was what I would say the best on any Windows laptop I had ever used, last year at least, um, rivaling the 16-inch MacBook Pro, which probably was better, but it's the fact that they're even in the same discussion is staggering, if you've ever used a MacBook Pro. Oh yeah, right away. So there are some louder laptops that I've tested with more overall raw volume getting up to almost 90 dB, but they don't sound even remotely as good as this here. Uh, this would beat out any Windows laptop I've ever used. 
um, maybe not last year, probably equal to that. This would be close to a MacBook Pro 16 inch. I still think the MacBook Pro 16 inch has better sound. It's just Apple. I don't know what it is. They just absolutely slay when it comes to that. But you can rest assured this thing has phenomenal sound. It's got so much bass, like quality bass too. And I think because this is, you know, a hybrid style laptop where creators and professionals may be using this laptop to do things like create music, right? If you're an audio creator, this is a laptop that you can use and you're going to get killer sound out of it. If you're actually making audio, making music on a laptop and you don't always want to have headphones in, you don't always want to have a dedicated sound system, this laptop, like a MacBook, is going to be fantastic for those type of creators. Okay, let's test the noise of the device here. Uh, I don't have a very quiet house, you can see. So it's not that loud actually. I mean, it the fans are going and it's not pitchy. It's like, I don't know how to describe it. It's a very just kind of whoosh sound. The fans are just making noise. Modern fans seem to be better for that. I've noticed that on actually a lot of recent laptops that I've been testing lately, um, that the fans aren't quite as annoying as they were even a few years ago, where they were more pitchy and whiny. It's maybe just some type of turbulence reduction in the way that they set up the fan. So that's good. Yeah, so on silent mode, the fans are there, the mic might pick it up, but I think my fridge is noisier. Yeah, my, it's getting to the point of being like the ambient noise of my house, where the fan is like, you can barely hear it. Now I can't hear the fan at all. The mic might pick it up, but I can't hear it anymore. Let's have a look at some benchmarks here. So we can see here that in Cinebench R23, the score is quite good, 18,637. So the Core Ultra 9 185H is doing incredibly well in this relatively thin chassis. It's a pretty good CPU overall, it's quite powerful, and it does run cooler than last year's 13th gen, which allows it to perform very well. You can see here that the temperatures here, we're not getting a lot of throttling. It did throttle very, very briefly, but basically the fans just kicked up and then the temperatures brought down to a level where it wasn't idling. Last year's model did run into some idling issues so that i9 wasn't performing as good as it technically could. Wi-Fi here is quite good. You can see you know, 500 or so on the downloads, 400 or so on the uploads. Uh, that's pretty good. That's about as fast as my Wi-Fi was going on that day. So pretty good. SSD is incredibly fast. Upper tier Gen 4 SK Hynix drive. So very, very fast SSD there. Battery life, it's okay. It's much better than last year, I would say, based on my tests at least. I'm running this here on that mini LED at full brightness. I never test on, you know, 50% brightness. I like to use it under a pretty good scenario. We're getting about six and a half hours here of idle use, so that's not too bad. Um, you know, the screen's pretty bright. It's on 60 hertz, but it's a pretty bright screen, uh, so it is going to be using a little bit more battery. And then when I went to some 1080p YouTube, uh, it's, again, it's okay. Not fantastic, but it's okay. We're getting here approximately four and a half hours of 1080p YouTube, which isn't bad to be honest. Last year's model was not getting as good battery life. It was probably getting around half I was actually getting when I was doing something like 1080p YouTube. So the Core Ultra is an improvement over last year. I think that with some further optimizations with you know BIOS settings and that, it could actually come down a little bit. You can de-bloat the system a little bit, get the battery life a little bit better. But overall, I would say here that the battery life is pretty good and definitely an improvement over last year. Here's a look at the webcam that's built in. It's actually a really nice webcam. I would expect as much. This is a high level pro laptop that's not just gonna be used for you know the most generic meetings. It's gonna be fine. You could even stream with it, to be honest. It actually looks pretty good. Usually with a laptop of this quality, and of course it's price, you're gonna get a nice uh, webcam on it. This does not disappoint. It looks pretty good. Good polling rate, good lighting as well. You know, I actually have a lot of overhead lighting, not so great, not that much coming in the front, and it's doing a pretty good job actually separating out my face. So good webcam, uh, gonna be great for meetings or you know, really anything. It's actually a really nice webcam. Okay, and unfortunately I've been running into some issues. Um, I'm installing this Lenovo system update thing. I don't know, maybe this will find it because Vantage didn't find any updates. I feel like there's like it needs to be updated is the problem here. Like we need, no, we need BIOS updates or something. And so we're going to come in here and let's see if this finds something because Vantage isn't finding anything. Windows updates only going to give you some stuff, probably really old. So I'm really hoping that there's something in the system update here. You can see, it's oh, really frustrating. Yeah, so something's up here. Um, I don't know. I think the system needs a BIOS flash. It's very new, right? This is a very new system. But the problem is it is out on the market. Like I've had this for a week 
I think it's been. Okay, well, they do have NVIDIA drivers on the Lenovo website. You don't normally need to get your drivers from the OEM. This is not a normal thing, um, but it is a new driver. So the 20, hopefully this works. Okay, and there we go. So the uh, NVIDIA drivers from Lenovo worked. So let's make sure we are on the newest driver. So that's a driver from, what the hell, from a while ago. Let's come in here again. We're gonna try this again. We're gonna go NVIDIA. Yeah, so that's the non-studio drivers. Uh, obviously Lenovo is giving me studio drivers, is my guess. I can't tell. Um, so we'll come in here, we'll go like that there. So that's a problem, it needs to be fixed. Uh, yeah, I can't rock three month old drivers. Uh, studio drivers are fine if you're just using it for studio purposes. Normally I'm okay with studio drivers, but you know I need the ability to also do game drivers. So the fact that we're locked behind, you know, month old driver, three month old drivers is not good. Okay, game testing time now. Now remember this, this display here has a very high resolution. Uh, we're approaching 4K, right? This is not 1080p. This is not even 1600p. This is just shy of 4K. When you look at these results here and you may think oh, it's okay, but you know, such and such, this is almost a 4K screen. This is much higher than, you know, 1440p, much higher much higher than 1600p. So we're gonna test some native. We'll test some with you know higher resolutions than that too. We'll just go through the work. So let's do native at high, which is gonna be very ambitious. And uh, so we'll see what kind of performance we can get. I will go from balance to turbo. This is turbo, it's gonna be a little noisy. You can hear here. Quite good performance, you can see, you know, 54, 52 FPS there, so you know, really, really good performance overall, right? Uh, if we kick it down to balance mode, you see the wattage to the GPU shot down a lot, it was at 100 or so, now we're at 60. Still really good performance, right? Still quite good performance. We'll throw in a little bit of DLSS because this is an extremely high resolution screen. Just going balanced. You can also turn down the medium, but I don't want to do that. So there's your like easy 70, right? 60, 70. When you get into the city of Baldur's Gate, it does drop down. Uh, I've beat this game a couple times, so I have some saves from Baldur's Gate. It'll lose performance, but uh, yeah, so let's go up to like turbo mode. And you'll see that wattage go up there. Right now we're up a uh, higher watt on that GPU. Yeah. So that's Baldur's Gate there. Um, we don't need to do too much testing. I really just wanted to look how good that looks. Oh. I just really wanted to test out the different modes here. This game is so colorful and beautiful. Like I've played this on, you know, some mediocre screens and you have 1080p and some mediocre screens and my God, does it just look fantastic on a screen like this, like an OLED or a mini LED. We have a mini LED here. It's just such a nice experience. It's just such an enjoyable game with these type of resolutions. Okay, let's do some iGPU testing now at performance mode. So turbo mode or whatever. So we're gonna love a little more wattage to the iGPU there. This is 1200p and we're on medium, just medium across the board and just quality uh, FSR. This is actually very good performance, wow. Yeah, so you can see here that the uh, 185H iGPU is performing very well. It's such a huge upgrade from the, I mean, whatever Intel had before. And this is easily outperforming the 125H, which was still good, but this is performing better. Come on here. And so what do I think about the 2024 Yoga 9i Pro with the new Intel Core Ultra CPUs? Uh, I think it's a, an amazing device in terms of design and build. It has an absolutely fantastic, gorgeous screen. Truly a gorgeous screen. Uh, probably the best I've ever seen on a laptop. Uh, you know, I've used lots of OLEDs and that. Mini LED just has some advantages over OLED. And, you know, being very high refresh rate is also extremely nice. 165 hertz is fantastic. So it is a gorgeous screen. The audio on it is staggeringly good. Uh, I would say it rivals is only rivaled by the MacBook Pro 16-inch. I don't think I've ever had any better speakers than that. Even the 14-inch can't compete. 
and I've tried a lot of laptops. So this has incredible sound. So media consumption, fantastic on this laptop. Uh, that's also going to be very important for people who are like creator styles. So, you, you know, like YouTube and social style creators, of course, you know, they're going to benefit from it. But then there's also, you know, graphic designers, those type of professionals who can really benefit from, you know, a screen like this that's designed for professionals, realistically. Uh, music as well, right? People who make music, that amazing audio on here is going to be fantastic. Whatever it is that you're doing on this, it's going to certainly have the power to do it. The CPU is incredibly powerful on this laptop here. Uh, it's rivaling any i9 13th gen laptop I've used realistically, unless you get into a gigantically thick you know, gaming laptop with like a 13980H. Uh, but any of the thinner ones, this is gonna easily rival those, but it also produces less heat. So you get less throttling, you get less fan noise, uh, even though it's a thinner laptop, normally you know, it would be more fan noise on a thinner laptop because it's really gotta work to keep those temperatures down or you get horrible throttling. You don't get any of that. So. The performance is good on that. The 4060 is obviously very performant here because it's not even a low wattage 4060. Not that that matters that much, but it does incredibly well. Gaming tasks, I mean, I played some super demanding AAA games. The screen on this is just shy of 4K, and the 4060 was up to the task. The CPU was up to the task, right? Uh, integrated graphics as well. I mean, the Intel Core Ultra with the Intel Arc does very well. Uh, I've seen some complaints about the MSI Claw recently in the past couple weeks. And I kind of suspected that would be an issue because Intel Core is a little bit less efficient than the uh, AMD counterparts. So the AMD handhelds, you know, like the Legion Go, they don't need as many watts to be effective. Here, uh, you could see that when I cut the watts down, it did really decrease the performance. However, at those high watts, 50 watts, really beyond that didn't really much, matter much, but 50 to 55 watts going into the CPU, APU, amazing performance on that iGPU, easily rivaling what AMD does but you need more watts to go get there. So that's another nice thing that came out of this is I was able to really see what the 185H can do. But uh, there's some software quirks that I have noticed. Uh, the 4060, the NVIDIA installer packages are not recognizing the 4060. I don't think that would be a Lenovo issue directly. Uh, it might be something like NVIDIA slash Lenovo issue, uh, or it is directly a, you know, a Lenovo issue, I'm not sure. The primary, like that's one thing, you know, not being able to install the drivers like that, having to get them from Lenovo is a pain. So that has to be addressed, probably through a BIOS update or I don't know. Maybe there's just some weird like machine ID or something that's not being flagged properly. I don't exactly know, but that has to be addressed. That's a pain more than anything. It's not really a deal breaker. Um, so right now it really comes down to, you know, if you're gonna buy into this, uh, you are gonna get an incredibly, incredibly nice machine with boatloads of power, gorgeous screen and audio, incredibly good build quality. Uh, and I think the biggest issue right now is just the battery life. You're not going to get good battery. If you're okay with that, I mean, people buy gaming laptops all the time, and gaming laptops have crappy battery, typically. Not always, but typically. Uh, so if you're okay with that, if you're okay with not having the best battery life, it's a fantastic laptop. Uh, but if you are looking for something that has all-day battery, um, you know, even this Yoga, I'm actually bringing in to review uh, the 14-inch model of this uh, soon. And, of course, there are the models of this that don't have the iGPU. Uh, the DGPU as well, but I'm bringing in an AMD model of this 14 inch with an 8845 HS, and I truly, I suspect that thing's gonna have crazy good battery life. So that's always an alternative as well. So, and it comes with an OLED. So, uh, great laptop, beautiful laptop. Hardware is outstandingly amazing. Uh, probably the nicest laptop I've ever used in terms of hardware. Like, it's just truly a gem. Uh, but there are some software quirks that need to be fixed.